Sakura Wars or Sakura Tyson, if we use the original series name, is one of the most popular franchises in Japan. A mix of dating sim and tactics game containing five original titles, lots of spin-offs, several anime series, live-action theater plays, and recent new PS4 reboot. Crazy popular in its homeland and wildly known by Ataku all over the rest of the world, but with one little option. Only two of the games were released in English, the fifth part for PS2 and the recent reboot for PS4. And all the other games still stay Japanese exclusives, as well as theatrical performances. And only guys at SEGA know why. And even if we'll talk about fan translations, thing that made a lot of great games playable for those who don't speak Japanese, there was no English translations of any Sakura Wars game till 2019, when guys from sakuratranslation.com made a huge gift to all Japanese games fans in general and Sakura Wars fans in particular worldwide and released a fan translation of the very first game in the series, original Sakura Wars for Sega Saturn. But what would you say if I told you that it didn't bother Russians at all? And not because there are no Ataku in Russia. There are plenty of them. The reason is we had not only original Sakura Wars in Russia already in 2006, but even Sakura Wars 2 in 2008. Both for PC only, but who cares? Two Japanese exclusive hit games never released anywhere in the West had an official release in the country, where most of the video games were always bootleg. Can you imagine that? Hello YouTube, my name is Victor and you are watching the Russian Video Game Comrade Show. Today it's time for some Japanese video game stories from Russia. Looking back now, it was really a unique case. We had several bootleg translated games from Japanese on PS1, but I've already shown you the quality of these translations. There were some exceptions, but I can't really say that we had at least one really good exclusively translated Japanese game that no one else around the world had. The most close example was R question mark MJ The Mystery Hospital for PS1. This game was a Japanese exclusive horror adventure game and in the end of the 90s Resident Evil and Silent Hill made horror games really huge in Russia. So everyone in the video game business wanted to release something at least vaguely resembling these games. And Russian pirate studio RGR translated The Mystery Hospital to Russian. And at the first sight it seems that this is a really good translation. All the menus, splash screens and in-game items are in Russian. And this is not jibba jabba like in Enigma, this is really good text. But there is one little thing. When anyone in the game starts to talk, all the subtitles say only speech. Thank you, I didn't realize someone was talking before you told me. But what are they talking about? The cover of the game says, all the text and sound is translated. Liars! And yes, you can complete the game, but you'll understand nothing about its story. And you know, they really tried to fix it. When you start the game, there is an option to read text translation of the plot, some hints and even the full walkthrough of the game. And it's really an outstanding example of bootleg translation for Russia. Especially considering this game is a Japanese exclusive and doesn't have an English version. Sorry for this little deter. So, in the Russian video game history, there aren't a lot of games translated from Japanese. Both official and bootleg Russian versions were usually made from English ones, like all over the world. And then, out of the blue, in 2006, Akela released Sakura Wars. A very popular Japanese game not available in any language except Japanese. And it wasn't a bootleg release. They really bought a license to release four main games from Sega. They say that Russian studio that made their way to the licensed market from the depths of pirated PC game releases. Remember I told you about the first really great Russian dubbed bootleg translations in episode 1 of RVGC. Most of these were made by Akela in their early bootleg years. Decided to release an out of ordinary for Russian market Japanese visual novel slash tactics game after the good reception of hentai games, their subsidiary Macha studio released in Russia several years earlier. I wonder if any Russian video game release that time didn't depend on earlier success of some erotic game. Anyway, in November 2006 Russian Sakura Wars was released. And I even have an original Akela CD in my collection. I got into Sakura Wars myself much later. You can even say just recently. But I already have some games and stuff on it. For example, check this out. We even had a licensed MPEG-4 release of Sakura Wars movie back in the day. And as I know, it's quite hard to find Akela's releases of Sakura Wars now, so I'm glad I at least have the first part. There are a lot of questions to the Russian version of the first Sakura Wars game. 
but the most recent is copy protection. Game was protected with early version of the infamous Russian copy protection system Star Force. I'm not really sure if you guys are bored familiar with it, but when I made the research for this video, I found information that you may be, as several games from Ubisoft were protected with it. Star Force was somewhat like modern Denuvo protection. On the one hand, it was really hard to crack. For example, PC version of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory with Star Force 3.0 protection stayed uncracked for as long as 422 days. But on the other hand, it had similar problems Denuvo has. It slowed down your PC, caused crashes, and some people say it could even damage your optical drive. Plus, it installed its own device drivers onto your system and didn't uninstall them, even when you uninstalled the game. So, once you've played something with Star Force protection, your PC continued to be slowed down until you reinstall Windows. Magnificent! In 2006, there was even a lawsuit against Ubisoft for using Star Force in their games. However, the case was dropped two years later due to lack of evidence. But it seems that this lawsuit was at least partly legit, as starting in 2006, new Ubisoft's games start using Secure ROM instead of Star Force. But not in Russian games. In Russia, Star Force protection lived long and continued to cause troubles for gamers for quite a long time. And the funniest thing that in Russia all these problems gamers had not because they preferred bootleg games over licensed ones, but because pirates continued to steal intellectual property regardless of all the efforts publishers made. As you can recall from one of the previous RVGC episodes on Russian point-and-click games, official dual case releases for PC in Russia cost almost the same as bootleg CDs. So there was almost no difference for gamers if they bought a licensed game or a bootleg one. Internet in Russia wasn't so fast back then as it is now, so you couldn't download gigabytes of pirated stuff from web. You had to buy your games anyway. But a lot of time since 1998 had already passed, and mass production of bootleg CDs became a lot cheaper, and Buka's idea of making their Red Comrades game as cheap as pirates could make more money distributing the original game than copying it didn't work anymore, and companies had to use copy protection. This is the reason you can't run Russian Sakura Wars games on modern systems unless you have an OCD patch. So I have to use an old PC to capture gameplay from the original CD for this episode. So now we have all that needed to play the game. Let's talk a little about its translation. They didn't have a full-time person to translate Japanese in Akela, so they just hired a freelancer. And that person wasn't good. Not only he had a passion for video games and knowledge of the subject, it appears he also was just a lazy person. At first it seems the translation of the game is quite good. They even added subtitles for video segments and translated the opening song. But every new chapter translation become worse and worse. Sometimes it even seems that part of the text was translated in old-school bootleg way with the early machine translation. For example, just take a look at this screenshot. Line reads, she has beautiful brown eyes. But Maria's eyes are green for God's sake, can't you see it? Needless to say, most of the jokes and underlined text were also lost in translation. I understand that this translation is bad, and the person who got money for this job got it in unfair way. But to be honest, considering it was the only non-Japanese version of this game, and we could play it and understand the plot long before all the other world, it's just priceless. I'm playing Sakura Wars 3 in Japanese with an online translator now, and it's also as brief as it can be, but the fact I can play this game and understand it is really astonishing. Oh my god, I love technical progress so much! Release of the second Sakura Wars in Russia was delayed for two years. This time, Akela wanted to find the man who can make the translation really good. Or at least find an editor who can edit translated text to make it accurate. And they found one. His name was Dmitry, and I found an interesting interview with him from 2012, where he told a lot of interesting stuff about Russian Sakura Wars releases. He says that there were two translators in Akela who worked on Sakura Wars 2, and one of them really made an awful machine-like translation. So, when he got the job, he realized that at least half of the work on translation had to be done anew from the start. He also says that Sega didn't help Akela with game resource unpacking, and Akela's programmers had almost to reverse engineer the games. It's a great luck they've done this before a lot of times when Akela released their first bootleg translations. He also says that heads of Akela didn't intend to translate in-game videos and make subtitles, so the guys had to do it themselves, free of charge and then literally beg the bosses to include this in the game. 
I wonder how it was done in the first part, if it was translated by the other guys who seemed not to be interested in the result of their work. As I said in the beginning, it's known that Akela bought the rights to translate and distribute not only the first two games, but all four Japanese exclusive ones. And as Dmitry says, the third game of the series, Is Paris Burning, was also fully translated. But then Akela cancelled release plans for third and fourth parts. They say it was caused by financial problems, and it seems to be right, as in 2012 Akela went bankrupt. And several years before that, they put all the low profitable projects on hold, and Sakura Wars series unfortunately was one of them. As the answer for the question why Akela even decided to release Sakura Wars, he made an assumption that after the success of the hentai dating sims in Russia, they just wondered what visual novels were the most popular in Japan, immediately saw the most famous Sakura Wars and just bought it, without thinking that translation of such games is much more complicated than translation of erotic dating sims. So basically, it seems that Russia got first two Sakura Wars games translations by accident. I've completed both Russian Sakura Wars games on PC and had a really great time, regardless of lot of critical errors on the way. Russian versions have a lot of random crashes. And it's another reminder of bootleg Russian translations. Did they even test it before release? As I've already mentioned today, now I'm playing the third one. And to be honest, I like the classic tactics battle system from first two games much more than the new one introduced in part 3. But I think it's a matter of taste. I'm really happy that today there is at least an English fan translated first part of Sakura Wars for Sega Saturn, and I strongly recommend to try it for everyone who loves Japanese games, anime and steampunk. And I really hope that there will be an English version of all the other games in the series. After all, they've released Sakura Wars Reboot worldwide. And maybe, just maybe, we have a chance to get first four games collection for some modern system someday. I don't even ask for a lot of spin-offs translation, just the original games at least. By the way, there was a recent English fan translation release of one of the spin-offs, Sakura Wars Columns 2 for Dreamcast. It's a puzzle Puyo Puyo-like game set in the Sakura Wars universe, and it even has a story mode with several fun stories about Hanagumi Squad life. These stories remind me of early Mortal Kombat story mode plots. They are bizarre, but quite fun if you like Sakura Wars and want to spend some more time with the characters of the game. For example, there is a story here when Sumireya loses her memory and tries to regain it, challenging her squad mates in the meantime. And of course, it will end in a stupid way when Hana will hit her with the door and memory will come back. Traditional Japanese humor. The most interesting thing here, I never was a visual novel fan myself. And I don't really like them now. But Sakura Wars somehow differs from all the other such games. Partly because it's not entirely a visual novel and has tactical JRPG elements. And I really like both classic and tactical JRPGs. And besides that, Sakura game series is really charming. In all the ways, steampunk setting, characters, music, oh my god, first time I heard the main theme, I was astonished. Maybe the best Japanese song I ever heard. I even bought several theatrical performances on laser discs. I have a very brief Japanese language knowledge and understand almost nothing watching this. But still, I watched both performances from the beginning till the end several times and couldn't interrupt for a minute. Unfortunately, there are no subtitles for this, so there are no options except learning the language. And I really hope I can someday overcome laziness, continue to learn Japanese and one day watch it one more time and understand it. I really want to. This was the story of an outstanding Russian translation of the Japanese exclusive no one else around the world got. And I still have a lot more stories regarding interesting video game things from Russia and will tell them in further episodes. Stay tuned. I really hope you've liked today's episode and willing to see more. Please press thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Have a nice day, good luck!